Welcome to the Branson Woodwind Shop. This is the third video in the series on the Herald Trumpet Restoration. Today I'm going to do some buffing on the instrument, but first I want to get out the small dents that are in it. There are a few small dents on the tuning slide crooks, and there's one in the lead pipe and one on the knuckle, and that's about it for the smaller dents on this instrument. These are probably about all the tools I'm going to need to do the job. There is a threaded lead pipe dent rod, and it has a threaded end so that I can put some dent balls on there of different sizes. I'm probably just going to use the small dent ball and then the medium one. And then there are two knuckle dent rods, and they have different shapes on them, and I will probably need those for the tuning slides. And I just realized I'll probably need this one, and this one is for getting the dents out at the end of third slide crooks. The smaller dent ball is used on some of the sharper dents, and the medium dent ball is used on some of the smoother dents. Like the one on the lead pipe, that's a smoother dent, and I will probably either use this dent ball, I may go to the next size up for this one. I'm going to give you a bird's eye view of the top of the vise. I put my lead jaw in there, and that helps to hold the dent rods. I'm going to start with a medium dent ball. Now I'm going to push some dents out. And in case if you're wondering why I have a band-aid on my thumb, it's not from band instrument repair. I'm working on some cabinets in my kitchen, and I got a cut on my thumb from a board. And last week I also had a few cuts on my hand. I don't know if anyone noticed them, but that was also from working on my cabinets. And now I'm going to switch the, uh, the tuning slide. And usually these dents come out easily, and these are not really causing any problems. So I'm just going to get all the ones I can with this dent rod, and then I'm going to switch to the other dent rod. And there's one on the back. Sometimes ones on the back are a little trickier because you have to push from the side. I may have to... oh, I guess it's coming out. For the third slide, I'll have to switch the dent ball to the small one because the rod will not fit in here with the larger dent ball in it. And there are a few dents at the right around the water key. I'm done with this dent rod, so I'm going to pull that one out and put in the other one. And this has a little bit larger of an angle to it, and that will get in a little farther on some of the dents. This one will get the dents at the end of the second slide. It's probably hard to see some of these dents coming out, and you almost have to be here in person to see what's happening. But uh, I will try to capture what I can on the camera. The first slide will not fit into there, so I guess I'm done with this tool. Now I'm going to use this dent rod, and that will get into the end of the crook on the third tuning slide. There are a few dents right at the end, and this tool will reach around to the end of the third slide. And there aren't too many other tools that will do that. You have to be careful with this tool because it can uh, do more damage if you're not careful because it can punch uh, it, holes or divots into the crook. So you have to be very careful on this one. I've made videos on how to remove the dents at the end of crooks, so if you have not seen those, I will leave the link to those videos in the description below. And I think I am about done with those dents. I'm done with this tool, and next I'm going to put in the trumpet lead pipe mandrel. I put the lead pipe mandrel into the vise, and I just have a couple dents on the third slide to get out with this one. Okay. I'm also going to clean up a few of the dents on the first slide. They didn't come out quite as nicely as I had hoped, so I will use this one to get at it better. Okay, that's good. Then I'll use the lead pipe mandrel for what it's intended for, and that's the lead pipe. And this one has the uh, little fairly long and smooth dent. Sometimes smoother dents are harder than the sharper ones. 
Now, usually on trumpet lead pipes you go in through this side, through the receiver, but I have the lead pipe off of the instrument and so I can go in through the other side this time. Okay. So what I'm going to do is try to smooth this out and since it's a, a fairly smooth dent, I'm going to go back and forth pushing fairly hard. You can see the mandrel bending and they are supposed to flex a little bit when you get the dents out. I got that dent out and there really aren't any other dents on the lead pipe so I guess the lead pipe is done. There's only one more dent on the instrument on one of the knuckles and those usually come out very easily because the metal is so soft in that area. Yeah, and that one came right out. Now I'm going to do some buffing on the instrument. I have not yet done any videos on buffing, but I hope to do some fairly soon. Buffing is usually done to polish metal. There are several different types of buffing compounds, but there are three that I commonly use. This is called Tripoli, and it is the coarsest of the three that I use commonly. And I use that if I need to buff down the metal quickly, or if I need to remove lacquer, or if I need to remove solder from an instrument. The white buffing compound is usually used for clarinet keys or other nickel plated surfaces and I also use that on some of the wick material for the tuning slide, to clean up the tuning slide tubes. The red rouge is a fine grit compound and that's used for polishing the instruments before you lacquer them. The one I'm going to use right now is the Triple E compound and I'm going to use that to clean up some lacquer. I'm also going to use that to clean up several of the solder joints where I took off braces and tubing off of the instrument. Also there are a few places that have some lacquer on it that's gone bad over the years and some stuff has gone underneath the lacquer and it's turned the instrument pink underneath it. And it's not red rot, it's just on the surface and the buffing compound will take that off real quick. There are two different buffing wheels I'm going to use. One is narrower and that fits into the smaller areas. And then there's a wider one. There are several places on the instrument where I removed some of the braces and tubing and that has solder marks on it. There are a few other places where I'm going to solder parts onto the instrument and you cannot solder on top of lacquer so I have to remove the lacquer underneath where I'm going to solder. This is a thumb ring to help hold the instrument. I'm going to feel where that is comfortable, probably uh, about right there. With a poker I'm going to mark around where that needs to go so I know where to take the lacquer off. I also need to turn it around to get both sides. There's where I marked it and I have to make sure that all the lacquer comes off in that area and then I have a few other places I need to do that also. I'm also adding a brace to the instrument so I'm going to put the tubing where it needs to go and then Put the brace in there and make sure that it's lined up. I want to make sure that the bell is straight and the bell is not crooked. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to mark this brace. Pull that off and that needs to come off too, that lacquer right there. There's one of the spots I mentioned with the bad lacquer on that, so I'm going to buff that off too. The lead pipe is going to go partially inside the section of tubing, so I need to see how much I need to buff off for that. So I'm going to put that in there and then mark this all the way around. And I need to take that lacquer off too. I do not have one of those large buffing machines, so I use my bench motor to buff. I chuck the spindle into the bench motor and tighten it up to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. And you always use safety glasses when you do this job. This is a messy job so I put a towel on my bench to keep the dust off the bench. And it is a good idea to have a dust collecting system. I do not have one, but if I did a ton of buffing I would probably get one. So you put the wheel on there and then apply some buffing compound. Now I'm going to start buffing up the areas that need to get cleaned up. Right now for today I'm just going to use the Triple E buffing compound. When I'm all done soldering and need to touch up the lacquer, I'm going to use the red buffing compound, but that's for a different day. But here I go.
Okay, that's about all it takes to get... Oops, I missed a spot. Okay, that's about all it takes to get the solder off of the instrument. I'm going to buff the other places and clean up the solder. Those two spots are cleaned up. Now I'm going to buff the lacquer off the end of the lead pipe. It takes a little longer to get lacquer off than it does solder, if the solder is just a thin coat of solder, that is. I need to make sure I got up to where the line is, and I think I did. When you buff, parts can go flying, so you have to be careful to hold on to the part. And it does take quite a bit of practice to get good at buffing. And I'm not the best buffer in the world. And also, it's not one of my favorite jobs to do, but I can do it, and I do it if I need to. It's just a little dirty. Okay, there, I think the lead pipe is done. Yes, that looks done. Now, I'm going to do this part. And let's see here. I think I'm going to take this wheel off, the large one, and put on the narrower wheel. The valve cluster has several spots I need to get, but it should not take that long to do. Whenever I do this job, I try not to take off more lacquer than I need to, because everywhere I take off lacquer, I need to put the lacquer back on. And also, I need to be careful when I do this, because if you catch, like for example, the tubing right here, if that got it caught into there, it would take the valve cluster and throw it to the ground. And I have done stuff like that before. Usually it happens with clarinet and saxophone keys, but it can happen with uh, other things too. If a clarinet key gets caught by the wheel and goes flying, usually you just need to look for the key and then keep buffing. But if this got thrown, I would have a lot more work. So I have to be very careful not to let this one go flying. On this one, I'm also going to clean up where the lacquer turned brown and pink underneath it. And also, I'm using my finger to protect the threads on the valve casing. The wheel will not hurt your finger if you have the gloves on and you don't leave it there too long. Okay, this is a little harder to get at because there's a crack there, or a sharp angle. Sharp angles are harder to get. I may need to get that some other way. You can see it did clean off most of the pink stuff that was on there. It is hard to get between the cracks when you use the wheel. When I'm done doing everything I can with the buffing wheel, I use some wick material and I put some buffing compound on it and use that to get in the cracks. I have a few more spots to clean up on here. I'm done with everything I can do with the buffing wheel. There are a few spots. One of them is behind this knuckle, and I cannot get that with the buffing wheel, so I'm going to get that with the wick material. I have a large roll of this wick. Usually it's used for kerosene and alcohol lamps, but I use it for buffing and pulling tuning slides and things like that. I put the wick into a little vise that I use to hold it, and then I take the buffing compound, and rub it onto the wick. Then I hold the valve section in the vise using a slide expander and I take the wick and I clean up whatever needs to be cleaned up. 
And this way, it doesn't work quite as fast as a buffing wheel, but it does work pretty fast though, usually. Unless you are trying to buff down metal. If you buff down metal, it takes a very long time to do it with the wick. There are also some more pink and brown spots I want to get right there. So I'm going to put that in between there. And buff that as good as I can get it. Okay, it's coming off. It will take a little while to do it this way, though. Okay, now I need to loop it around there. You just have to do whatever you need to do to make it work. Oops. The wick just broke, so I'm just going to use the half that I have since there's just a tiny little bit left to do. And... I'll finish up this job and that will be it for this video. Okay, that looks good. Next week I'm going to solder on the lead pipe and several other parts. So by the end of next week, this valve section should be almost complete. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.